Elizabeth with Ave Parfum. Wanted to introduce you today to a perfume house from Scotland called Joram Studio. But before I get into that, I do want to ask you to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Um, I haven't been great about making videos in the past couple of years, but I'm hoping to change that. So um, if you don't want to miss one, then please do subscribe. So this is a house that I, I think I mentioned is based, based out of Scotland. Uh, the perfumer is Ewan McCall. And I have kind of the collection, what we have in stock. Um, behind me here we have six I'm sorry we have seven of their fragrances six of them are from one collection and the seventh one is called Phantosmia from what I understand it's based on like a, a phantom scent that was floating around you in mind um, I know that happens to me quite often I don't know about you but I guess he captured it finally and bottled it for us to smell what goes on in Ewan's mind. <laughs> the phantom fragrance. I just wanted to say that one of the reasons we're working with Joram is because they are so closely aligned with our own philosophy of, um, I guess, ethics really. If you go onto their website, um, they have an ethics policy that's pretty well um, spelled out and everything and one of our biggest things or really the biggest thing for us is is that we support artisans who do not use what I call inherently cruel musks and those are castorium, deer musk, civet um, and so anytime I mention any of those notes in any video, uh, that's going to be the synthetic version of it. Whether it's, a, it's an accord that the perfumer created themselves or just the synthetic molecule or whatever. So I wanted to talk about, I guess my favorites from Joram Studio from what I've tried so far. I'm a, I've tried them all, but it was only once. Um, and one of my favorites happens to be Phantosmia, the latest one. So we're going to start with that. Oh, another thing I want to say about Joram, though, is I, I'm a certified herbalist. Um, I know a lot of plant names. And there are tons of, of notes in really every fragrance from this house that I don't recognize at all. Um, they could be common, it could be that the common name is something I'm not familiar with because common names can change from, you know, location to location. But there are gonna be some notes I read here that, that I'm not familiar with and I kind of doubt you are too. So part of the fun of Joram, I feel, is that each fragrance you can't necessarily even picture what it might be like based on the notes alone because you you might not know what half the notes smell like. <laughs> Starting with Phantosmia, the notes for Phantosmia are black pepper, annatto, I have no idea what that is, cardamom, pimento, fennel, shiso leaf, mate, cascaria, nutmeg, I don't know how to say this, atoxalon, castorium, saffron, and tobacco. I'm wearing this fragrance for about 30 minutes. Um, what I do know from my previous wearing and this one is the first thing I smell is, um, I swear it's just all about a mechanic shop to me. I smell like um, rubber tires, burning brakes, <laughs> and um, let me see, the other thing is like a motor oil type of scent. So, um, you know, some some people may say that's completely masculine and it's not me at all, and that's fine, everybody's different. Um, it happens to be one of my favorites. I love stuff like that. I absolutely love the smell of, um, not necessarily tires, but I kind of like the motor oil mechanic shop kind of thing. 
absolutely I will wear stuff like that. As it dries down, I get a lot more of a spiciness. Um, again, some may, some may feel it's masculine. I smell a lot of um, nutmeg is kind of the first thing I smell. It's not all that peppery on me, you know, um, considering black, black pepper, pimento, maybe one of these other things. Um, I really don't get necessarily a, a heavy pepperiness. So actually, as it dries down, to me, it becomes almost more like an amber. Um, uh, it does become smooth. I do smell a sweetness. I, I feel like I personally don't get tobacco, but I change my mind as it dries down. I do get more of a tobacco. I wouldn't call this a tobacco fragrance. The big thing for me overall is, is that I get the, um, the whole, uh, motor oil mechanic shop kind of vibe that lasts the whole time for me so I, I want to say you know <laughs> it's interesting because it's what goes on in, in Ewan's what floats around in his in his scent mind <laughs> so we're gonna move on now to one that I can't pronounce really very well either <laughs> so Ewan if you're watching this Please forgive me if I am saying this completely wrong. I'm trying to picture it the way a Scottish person might say it, and I'm coming up with Majulary Ray. It's the one with the hyphen. Majulary Ray, something like that. <laughs> so this is also, as I said, one of my fav favorites from Joram. Um, and I'll read the notes here. We have uh, fig leaf, cardamom, olive, juniper, frankincense, orris, rose, pomegranate. Can't read my own writing. <laughs> Myrrh, vetiver, guyac wood, papyrus, hay, birch, cedar wood, castorium, valerian, and sandalwood. Um, what strikes me right off the bat with this one is the fig. Um, it's definitely a fig leaf. Um, I personally really love woody fig fragrances. And if you're looking for a solid one, this is absolutely one to try. Um, it's a really nice balance between fig and, and wood. Um, the other thing, it kind of reminded me of a little bit was uh, Womanity. And it's because it's, I think it's because of the olive. It gives it sort of like a, <sighs> salty-ish, savory-ish kind of undertone that's not easy to pinpoint, but it's there somehow. Now I've been wearing this one too for 30 minutes. As it wears down, I, I'm not getting more fruit. Um, it, it's not like a, a, a fruity fig type of scent. Um, it really is kind of like a smooth, slightly green, maybe slightly, it's, it's slightly milky. Um, I feel like I get a little bit of olive flesh, um, not super salty, but kind of like the olive is um, deepening or adding to the woodiness of it. It's very hard to describe because it is really well blended. There is a sweetness here, but I don't know where it's coming from. Um, I know rose is in here, but it's a sweetness that I associate with something like baronia. Yeah, I would have actually guessed that there might be baronia in here if I didn't know any better. So the next fragrance I wanted to talk about is uh, Nectary. And that is an interesting one. Um, here are the notes. Bramble, 
I don't know what bramble smells like. I don't really know exactly what bramble is. Cranberry, peach, rose, oud, ambergris, uh, rose root, olibanum, which is a variety of frankincense, if you didn't know. Self heal, castorium, civet, labdanum, and musk. Um, when I first sprayed nectary on, it smelled not super attractive, I have to admit. Based on the notes, I guess I was expecting something really strongly peachy, like juicy peachy, with, um, yeah, with animalic, so kind of something vintage-y. Um, that's the only thing I can say as far as what I was expecting. What I smelled was almost like bruised, fermenting fruit, something like that. And I, I, I wasn't in love with it at first, I have to tell you. Um, at first I just thought, wow, I, I just can't imagine this turning out to smell good or like better, I should say. Uh, it even kind of reminded me of like, I don't know, like, I, I hate to say it, but kind of like a cheap fruity wine or like cheap fruity peach liqueur type of thing. Um, and the civet I felt was pretty intense. And so that combined with the super animalic kind of pea note, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a pretty sight at first, but, um, I, you know, I, I, I know to give things time and I, I just let it do its thing. And I would say it did its thing. It, it's a pretty magical scent. I mean, it became something so pleasant and cohesive and I would even say just really elegant. It just became this um, velvety, lush, uh, not even super floral. I know there's rose in here. It wasn't super floral. It's another thing, it was, it was so balanced. It's not super floral. It's not super juicy, peachy, fruity. Um, it's not juvenile at all. Very grown up, very elegant, um, rich, I'd even say uh, sensual. And I just recall as it dried down, I got more of the darker notes. So kind of joining in with the civet was the castorium, which um, it did give it just a slight, slight leather vibe. Um, and actually, despite the, you know, castorium civet, I didn't necessarily feel like it was a, like a vintage or vintage vibe. It seemed very modern to me, yet rich in the way that vintages are. Just super impressive to me. Um, and yeah, as time went on, I did, did get some of, some, some darkness to it. Like I said, part of it was like a leatheriness, maybe some of the oud. Um, I do recall picking up some of the um, olibanum, but just barely. That kind of sums it up for Joram for now. I hope that gives you kind of a taste of what they're all about and what they have to offer. Fascinating stuff, guys, if you haven't tried it. So um, yeah, we have it all available at uh, aveparfum.com, A-V-E-P-A-R-F-U-M.com. Thanks for joining me. And uh, like I said, don't forget to subscribe. We'll be coming out with another video sometime soon. Okay, take care. Bye.